The godly still embraced him. Accusations of hypocrisy no longer apply. If you hated rhinos last year, now you can love them because ideology is dead. And yeah, Trump stretched the truth a little, but when you're up against Hillary, the fountain of all falsehoods, accusations of dishonesty don't rate. Which brings me to number three. The Dems should have listened to us. Sorry, Bernie, America was not sick and tired of her damn emails. The emails exposed her arrogant deceptions. And get this, Benghazi mattered. People cared about who pushed the video, despite the media's mockery. If the left weren't so blinded by gender politics, they would have found someone who didn't somehow work <laughs> Anthony Weiner back into the picture. His package was always part of the package. <laughs> Number four. The identity grift no longer worked. It had a good run, four decades of calling people racist or homophobes or racist homophobes. But the boys who cried bigot finally wore out its welcome. The social justice warrior is now the official pinata for ridicule. They are the workout leotards of 2016. Yeah, I miss those. I'm wearing one right now. But America, do not get comfortable. Left-wingers, they're like zombies. They always rise from the grave only in new clothes. Communists became progressives. Radical subversives became social justice ghouls. So the left will be back. And whatever they become next will be worse. Because if there's one thing we learned that they never learn at all. Yes, 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 yes. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's so bright. You can get a suntan just by sitting next to him, Washington Times political columnist and Fox News contributor, Charles Hurts. He's as sharp as a stick and like a dog, he's always fetching. Guy Benson, downall.com political editor and Fox News contributor. She tells her old acquaintance to go pound sand. National Review reporter, Kat Tim. <laughs> and Stonehenge is his paperweight. TNA wrestler and Fox News contributor, Tyrus. Oh All right. Do we have a... I think we might have another little chunk of, uh, of uh, Donald from the debates. And I want to ask you what your favorite moments were. Do we have something here? We have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. Casual about the use of nuclear weapons. He's had went after a disabled reporter, mocked and mimicked him on Wrong. national television. He has consistently denied what is Wrong. a very... Such a nasty one. Trust. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. Charles, um, a lot to choose from over this year. What was your favorite part of the debates or the, uh, part of the primaries in general? Was there a, a moment that, like, sticks out? Well, I mean, really, there wasn't a bad debate in no. either the primary or in the general election. They were all fantastic. Yeah. And, and they were fantastic because of him, because he, uh, you know, he rewrote all the rules. I, probably if I had to pick the most, uh, the, probably the, the, the most important one was the second general election debate where he, the media had thrown everything at him for two weeks. And he had to go out there after being called, you know, all, all these things. And he had to go out there and just sort of keep on, keep on going. Yeah. And, and, and he succeeded. But probably the, uh, the, mo the single most important was when uh, it was the first debate, the Fox debate, where he walked out and he was, go he was, out, he, he was cruising for a bruising. Mm -hmm. And he went out there and he started a fight. Mm -hmm. And he got into a, the, a fight. And then within minutes, he was he was mocking Rand Paul for being two percent in the polls and on the stage with him. And at that moment, it was clear there were the, all the rules had been rewritten. Yeah, I also love the fact when that during that was that during that debate that he didn't raise his hand. Yeah, yeah. that was like that was like he was and, like, why am I? Why and, would I raise and, my hand? And, and, and before he before he didn't raise his hand, he, he looked up and down the aisle, aisle. And, and and said, well, they're all doing one thing. I'm doing something different. No, that was I, they, they must be wrong. He was the opposite of peer pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Guy, what did you? What was your favorite moment? I think one of his stronger moments came against Ted Cruz in a head-to-head -head where he responded to the New York values attack. Yes. Because Cruz was trying to send a message: this guy's a liberal. This right. guy can't be counted on. He's secular. And it was, you know, what he was trying to say was something pretty political and typical. Yeah. 
And rather than saying, that's not true, I'm a conservative, he said, how dare you attack my city and my state? How about our spirit on 9-11? And I think Cruz was utterly unprepared yeah. for that comeback. And then my, my favorite general election debate moment was Hillary Clinton had this pretty devastating line of attack where she was going, and it's ironic now, because she was saying, this man may not accept the election results. <laughs> um, and so, you know, perish the thought. And she went down this whole litany of instances where he has claimed something was rigged against him when right. it didn't go his way. She said, even his Celebrity Apprentice show didn't win the Emmys, and he said those were rigged. And off camera, he goes, we should have gotten it. <laughs> And, like, it was such a serious attack from her, but when he jumped in and still insisted they should have won the Emmy, she almost started to laugh. Yeah, see. yeah. It's like, how, what can you do? He's a character. Kat, uh, what what did you find? What, what was memorable to you? I think my favorite thing is every time he ever said anything, he'd always go like this. <laughs> it's the best face ever. I can't stop. I make, I've started making that face. It's, 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 it's like he's... Okay, but it's like he's thinking with his lower jaw. It's like a resting bulldog face. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the debates were interesting to watch. My life is not as exciting now that I don't get to sit there with my little mug of wine, my yeah. little coffee mug of wine, and watch and tweet away. You know, with the first debate, we've got Rosie O'Donnell and her appearance coming into it, and everyone's yeah. saying, you know, that's incredibly problematic for him to have done. But boy, was it fun to watch. Yes. <laughs> I'm more troubled by the mug of wine. I get your philosophy. It's, it's Our Lady of Shesh Jehovah mug of wine, so yeah. it's a religious experience. I'm sure it is. I think what you're trying Thank to you. say is that because you don't go outside and drink socially, you can drink wine and Why anything. would I have wine glasses? Glasses. All regular cups hold the same fluid. Yeah, that is true. That is true and very sad, Tyrus. Very sad. If I wasn't so scared of her, I'd give her a hug. <laughs> my, my favorite moment was, and he had a lot of moments, but as a guy who likes to get the last word in, I feel like yeah. Donald has the same disease I do. Yeah. Um, Hillary hit him with some stuff. And, and on far as political points go, she probably won every debate. Mm -hmm. But he always had a good comeback, even if it literally was the worst thing you could possibly say in the moment. And I've been guilty in that. If you've ever argued with a woman, she's going to hit you with a lot of stuff, and you got to come back with, and he came back with, you nasty woman. <laughs> and from, a guy who's, from a guy who's dropped, like, you nasty woman, or is that the makeup you're going to go with? Those stuff <laughs> like that. To get a, I'm just saying. I didn't say dance. I said you look fat in your pants. You come up with... Stuff like that to win arguments because you can't beat him on substance. <laughs> yeah, so. I think he was in a way a proxy for, a, 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 and we didn't expect it, uh, but a proxy for Americans because he not only did he say certain things, he also would get bored, he would get fidgety, he would get do his wise ass comments. Yeah, it was like a ten year old at his sister's piano recital. Even after a debate, he even said. But it was way too long. Do you remember that? He goes, oh, yeah, this is too long. We don't need to. People at home don't need to watch all that. Remember that? It was like the first or second one. He was like, just, yeah. yeah. And and he, like, they oh. didn't need those undercard debates, by the way. Yeah. Those were sad. That was like the separate lunchroom for the kids with the peanut allergies. Yes. <laughs> Really the debates were like the movie Office Space, you know, yeah. like the guy would come out and ask for T forms and Trump was like, oh, man, I'm going to change stuff next. Go to commercial. Let's move on. Like he just didn't he didn't do his homework. He didn't study the, the long, boring political jargon that we hear. Right. Of, I'm going to all the different eight points of things you're never going to do. He just wanted to get to the substance and get out. Yeah. Oh, you know? And listening to him mock a 14 point plan. Can you believe it? A 14 point <laughs> Who has a 14 point plan. And, and as a ma he, uh, he's a master marketer. And as a master marketer. Or his ability to know what you know what the customer wants. Yeah, and and he figured that out so well. And 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 it, and not only did he did he reveal that he knew it so well, he revealed how like the media totally doesn't get the the customer yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. Last word, guy. You played it in the montage where he made the little quip about she'd be in jail, and yeah. people lost their minds. The media's like, oh, my God, he's an authoritarian who's going to unilaterally put people in prison. And I think most voters by that point had realized you don't take everything he says literally. Yeah. The media never learned that lesson. And also, for all the you know fainting that they were doing, a, according to polling, a majority of the American people disagreed with Comey's decision not to recommend an indictment yeah. against Hillary Clinton. So it's not like he was way out of bounds. Yeah. All right, we got to go. I keep thinking about that movie that, that it was a left-wing fantasy called Bullworth. You know, remember with uh, uh, w w uh, Warren, Warren Beatty? Beatty yep. they, they made this up, but this actually happened.
It's actually, it actually was bulwark for the right, I yeah. think. It was a very unusual phenomenon. All right, coming up, a story so cool, you're going to need to run your fingers under warm water so they don't have to be removed. That's disgusting. Thank you. Which Donald Trump slogan was the best? Hint, they were all equally awesome. But first, this. She's like a highway in Alaska, nothing but cold shoulders. McDonald's only sells her unhappy meals. And she's our goddess of gloom, our princess of pessimism, our maiden of misery. If good news were a parade, she would rain on it. If hating everything were an Olympic event, she'd win the gold, silver, and bronze. She's like a runner's cramp, sharp and painful. She's quirky and smirky, her soul quite murky. Like a fresh cut dandelion, she's always bitter. In school, they called her Four Eyes because she looked like a potato. She's where silver linings go to die. She's like a tube of toothpaste on the floor, crestfallen. He ruled the land with his relentless brand. It's Trump's greatest skill, his ability to brand everything, clothing, buildings, water. He brands more product than a cattle rancher on meth. So here is Trump's step-by-step -step guide on how to create a winning brand and becoming president of the United States. It's very easy. Step one, come up with a catchy phrase. Repeat it over and over and over and over again. And also write it across your forehead. We are going to make America great again. We're going to make America great again. Make America great again. Make America great again. We'll make America great again. Mm -hmm. Step two, keep all campaign promises to approximately three words or less to help eliminate confusion. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. We're not winning anymore. We're going to start winning so much. We're going to start winning, winning, winning again. We're going to build the wall. Believe me, we're going to build the wall. We're going to build the wall, right? We're going to have the wall. We're going to have the wall. We're going to make the wall now 10 feet taller. <laughs> Repetition and simplicity. It's genius. Step three, reinforce trust by constantly repeating these two words. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. The result, Trump indoctrinated half of America into his very special army. He's like KISS without the makeup. Scientology without the freaky beliefs. Freemasons, but with way better hats. All right, guy. Uh... What, what was your favorite, I guess, slogan? What do you think really worked for him? Uh, look, the fact that if you went out on the street and asked the average American what was Donald Trump's campaign slogan, I think most people would know, make America great again. He said it yeah. over and over again. People said, oh, these hats are so unsophisticated and rudimentary. Well, they worked. And so I tried to remember. I followed this stuff for a living. Mm -hmm. What was Mitt Romney's slogan? Uh. Does anyone remember? It was uh, Believe in America. Uh, John, John Kerry's slogan was really inspiring in 2004. Let America be America again. <laughs> Donald Trump's like, that's lame. Cut a bunch of words out. Make America great again. Build a wall. You say it over and over again. People actually have a sense of what he might want to do. What does Donald Trump want to do as president? The wall. People yeah. know it because he understands marketing, he understands sticking to a message. And with all the squirrels he would chase and all the insane distractions of 2016, it would come back to a few key phrases that people internalize. Yeah. Charles, do you think it matters if he doesn't follow through with some of this stuff? Because people don't really, it's like, I don't know who said it earlier, yeah. not many people believe everything he says. So he probably, he's not going to lock her up. And when he said he wasn't going to lock her up, everybody said, yeah, we knew that. Yeah, no, I think that, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people, that was one of the big failures of the media was that everybody took him absolutely, literally, throughout all of it. And they didn't understand that, you know, okay, build a wall or secure the border. Secure yeah. the border would be a great step. I mean, Washington's been talking about that for, you know, 25 years and they haven't, and they failed to do it. But probably, I, I think the best slogans were the ones that he hung on his enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, like Pocahontas for Elizabeth Warren. Yes. And he calls her Pocahontas. And everybody's so outraged. And then at the end, finally, he apologizes to Pocahontas. Yeah. It's just perfect. That's the best. Or, 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 but, but, uh, but the other thing is that, you know, Mitt Romney just ruined 
uh, being rich yes. in America. And Donald Trump made it great again, made it great to be rich again. Yeah. And he'd r fly around in his plane. And my, my favorite scene of the whole campaign was when uh, Ted Cruz came out to Cleveland for the RNC and he's trying to give some speech Meets, yes. by the lake. And here comes Donald Trump's right. plane. Yeah. yeah. And he circles a couple of times, completely drowning out the guy's speech. Yeah. It's perfect. You know, uh, in, in the movie, Cruz is going to be the bad guy, for, and, and the actor who plays Cruz will probably be nominated and, for an Oscar because it's such a brutal, like, he's, he's going to be the most unlikable person. But the scene has already been filmed. Yeah. That was Rodney Dangerfield in Caddyshack, yes. yeah. when, when Judge Smells is trying to christen his ship, yeah. and here comes Rodney Dangerfield in his big boat. Yeah. He was. Tyrus, uh... Did you think it'd be? Do you think these things were successful, or or is it, was do it? Do I hit? think they were successful? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are we laughing and talking about? Uh, yes. <laughs> Look, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do we know him for his his theatrical? No, his stick around. His yeah, lines. Yeah. His one lines. They stick. People think about it. And they can use it in a sentence as tangible. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, when she her all her catchphrases was like those late night Animal Planet commercials <laughs> for the dogs. Yeah. They're like four minutes long. Yeah. Even though your heart's in like, oh, the dogs. We got to. <laughs> After a while, you. Yeah, because <laughs> you're so long, you know, and I, I get it. Yeah, you know, I, I come from a wrestling background. We're all about the one phrase, you know. For me, it was somebody call your mama, and I'd be walking down the street. They didn't talk. Somebody call your mama, and I'd be like, <laughs> Okay, bro, call my mama. You know, and it's the same thing. I Build need a catchphrase. You get it? Yeah. You. I don't know what. Creepy is cool, and then it just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Well, you know what? Cool is creepy. See? You there you go. CC. Yeah. GG CC. See, it works for me. Kat, what do you uh, make of this? Uh, simplicity was brilliant. Yeah. Also, you know, build the wall. Everyone understands what that means. It's hard to do, but when you, people explain why he couldn't build the wall and let Mexico pay for it, it that boring. was harder to understand <laughs> exactly. than, what well, he's going to build the wall and get Mexico pay for it. People say, well, everyone's already done listening because it gets boring. <laughs> yes. People are uh, pro-winning. Yeah. People are <laughs> pro-America. Again, his facial expressions just crush it every yeah, time for yeah. me, really. I really, really just love that. Made it very simple, very fast, very positive message. Really couldn't go wrong with that. He would also physically hug American flags. <laughs> yeah. Like he would come on stage and be like, look at this flag. Oh, I love the flag. Oh, like, hey, flag hugging. Believe I love this flag. I was like, all right. I love this that's flag. Working. Plus, it gets stuck in your head whether you like it or not. Like, I know that my pillow gives you the best night sleep in the whole wide world. Do I know that? <laughs> From working here, yes. If it's true, I don't know, but I still have it in my head. It's the same thing with all these. That's why I keep buying a lot of gold and silver. Yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm doing it. It's like I don't understand it because they keep saying now has never been a better time, and I'm thinking, but this ad's been going on for a while. <laughs> so if I bought it for you a couple, it couple of years ago, that was a bad move. <laughs> No, it's a great move. What am I talking about? Gold and silver? It's never been a better time to buy. <laughs> as well as reverse mortgages and solid gold catheters. We'll be back. All right, coming up. A story so crazy, you'd think it was made out of straws. Hmm. President-elect Trump and his tweets, they go together like a pair of socks. Why do some people want to separate them? But first, this. He's so big, his body's divided into both commercial and residential units. Took five storks to deliver him. He uses the Goodyear plimp as a pillow. A volcano is his hot tub. He uses a cruise ship as a bath toy. A satellite dish is his dinner plate. He uses a Ferris wheel as a unicycle. A hula hoop is his toe ring. He uses Big Ben as a pocket watch. He uses a Redwood as a toothpick. He uses SUVs as roller skates. TNA wrestler Tyrez. <laughs> Happy New Year's Eve. Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Arthel Neville. Celebrations are underway around the world as people ring in the new year. In places like Sydney, Australia, and Dubai, well, it's already 2017. Fireworks filling the skies and delighting large crowds. At the same time, police stepping up their presence in Paris and Berlin to keep everyone safe during those festivities. And our All-American New Year kicks off at 8 Eastern time tonight with Countdown to 
the 2017 Kennedy and Jesse Waters bringing us the latest from Times Square until 11 p.m. Eastern. And then Kimberly Guilfoyle and Eric Bowling will ring in 2017 as the ball drops from Times Square. Don't miss it. Fox News Channel's All-American New Year. I'm Arthel Neville. See you at 6 p.m. Eastern with Greg Garrett. Why so bitter about our leader's Twitter? A post-election poll showed 60% of Americans want President-elect Trump to close his Twitter account, to which Trump replied, <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Why should he stop tweeting? How do you think he got elected? By hiding from the media? Never talking to anyone? Never answering questions? Letting someone else tweet for you? No, that's how you lose an election. Twitter gave Mr. Trump a 24-7 megaphone. Literally 24-7. Remember those 3 a.m. tweets after the first debate when Clinton brought up <laughs> former Miss America, Miss Universe, Alicia Machado? Everyone thought he was nuts. Bad move. What are you doing? But then a few hours later, this. Quote. For those few people knocking me for tweeting at 3 a.m., at least you know I will be there awaiting <laughs> to answer the call. He threw himself its own lifeline. Let's face it, the media doesn't want Trump tweeting because it eliminates them. Who needs Chuck Todd when you got an iPhone and a handle? So you got to wonder what the election would have been like if Donald Trump didn't tweet. <laughs> Adorable, but really, really boring, I think is what it is. <laughs> Kat, you're on Twitter. I, I firmly believe that tweeting doesn't make anyone look better. It makes them worse because it, it takes advantage of your impulsiveness and your emotion. Like when you're having a great time, you never tweet, right? I know. That's why I, t I tweet all the time. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. There's been so many nights where I've done some tweeting before, you know, going to bed, <laughs> passing out. And you wake up in the morning and you're like, what have I done? Yes. You wake up, you wake, or when you, before you go to bed, everyone that's tweeting at you being like, what? What is that? You're like, oh, I hate these people. They don't have a losers. And you wake up and you're like, maybe they were right. <laughs> yes. Maybe that is something I should not have shared with 100,000 people. <laughs> but, you know, um... Nice humble brag. I yeah. think, <laughs> no, it's not. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean I it like that. I literally was doing the math in my head like, oh, 100 or 10? No, it's, it's, it's more than 100. But you know what? <laughs> but look, it's actually 113. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think, remember my first Twitter account. <laughs> I think that Trump, it's, you know, I always feel embarrassed when I put my own personal drama on the Internet. People yeah. could tell I'm going through something. I feel like Trump should be a little more careful to not put our country's drama <laughs> on the Internet so that they know when our country is going through something. Yeah. I think that there should be the same level of embarrassment that I have, he should have, and then maybe a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Doris, is, this a, is there a strategy here that he realized if something's happening that's big, he'll tweet as a distraction so people don't look at the, the, the it's a shiny bobble over here. It's, it's genius in the sense that he's taken, taken, he's taken, <laughs> taken, taken. 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 I'll take taken. Great he's movie. managing his own destiny. Yes. He's not waiting for the media to spin it. He's not. He's. You're getting it from the horse's mouth. So if I want to know something from Donald, I will go to him. And how many times have you been able to do that in terms of a president? So. Yeah. And he's going to answer it, and sometimes it's entertaining. Someone cracks me up. You know, some of the things that he says. But <laughs> the fact that he takes it on, because I would do the same thing. But usually, you know, with a gang of beer or something, be like, oh, let me tell her what I think. But the fact that he's doing that. <laughs> yeah. That people people get that we relate to that. Yeah. You know, one of the great things about George Bush was that guys felt like they could have a beer with him. Yeah. And the thing about Donald Trump is you think you can talk to him. Mm -hmm. Like if if he walked in this room, I think everyone here would be like, Hey Donald, I have an issue with this, and I don't like this. And I'm like, All right, cool. Let me. I'll tweet you. I'll let you know. I'll hit you back. <laughs> but but um, that's what America. We like that. Yeah. Got I, it. I, the check, check sex tape and passed. I love by the way. You can answer any question with that. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. All right, guy. Uh, is this a good strategy? You know, my friend. One of my friends tells me that Trump misspells tweets on purpose uh, for to create more combustion. That th I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out. Have we confirmed? Does Trump inherit the at POTUS official Twitter handle? Because that would be, first of all, amazing. Yeah. And his first tweet. 
upon taking office and taking hold of this handle should be at Barack Obama. Just sad exclamation point. <laughs> it's like, welcome. A good welcome. No, but I, I don't. I don't think your friend is altogether wrong about that. I think yeah. he does. He, he does sort of. Uh, he trolls linguists all the time. Right. Like when he talks about big league, big yeah, league, big yeah. league, big league. And 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 I was and I waited for months for some uh, reporter at the New York Times to come out and say big league isn't a word. Yeah. And yeah. I looked it up. It's a word. Yeah. Big league. And he always used it correctly. Mm. And and it would have been so great if some smarty pants had corrected him on it and it been, and he would have just dropped the dictionary on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah? Check this out. Yeah, exactly. Um, the problem with doing a segment like this, uh, which is, uh, let's just say it's pre-taped by a few hours uh, from, from its for initial error. There will be about six tweets that have happened since then that we will wish we could talk about. I can't <laughs> wait for New Year. I know. In a few hours from right now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, more of the year of Trump after a break. But first, as we kick 2016 to the curb, let's look back on the things we frankly had enough of and wish would go away in 2017. Yes, we're sick of seeing you and hearing you, and it's time for you to call it a day. They sang, they preached, they stumped, they cried, but in the end, the preferred candidate was trumped. I speak of the many celebrities who tried their very best to influence your vote with their fabulousness. There was Lena. My girl's a rider, progress and freedom fighter, going up against a dude who's a climate change denier. She worked harder than her man did, still saw her grandkid, and people have the nerve to ask her what her plan is. The plan is to win against hatred and slurs, break it down in three words. I'm with her. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Interesting so thing, you know, vomit actually throws <laughs> up in its own mouth. <laughs> vomit actually has a mouth. All right, and of course, my good friend Amy. I hope that people don't blame you if an orange sexually assaulting Godzilla who started a fake college is f***ing up the entire planet a year or so from now. That would be a bummer, right? Yeah, well, he won. And whoever these people are. Donald Trump is some garbage fire. And the worst presidential candidate our country's ever seen. So. You got to it's really boring. That makes everything feel so good right now. <laughs> it really does. It does. An example of what I call opposite influencers. A lot of people on the fence probably voted for Trump just to spite these twits. Trump should thank them just to make them more mad. Uh, all right, Charles. Um, do you think there will they, any of these people will have a moment of self-reflection and go? No, Boy, no, no <laughs> yes. it's not possible. Yes, and then they, and then they promise to leave the country. What did they? What did they think people were going to do when they promised to leave yeah. the country if they voted? Probably my favorite uh, accidental helper though was uh, remember when Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham called Trump a jackass, mm -hmm. and then Trump uh, decided to pull out of his desk the number, the his phone. personal private phone number for, that he had left him to help him get onto Fox News more often, actually. Yeah. And he read it to the world. And then, and then what I loved more than anything after that was uh, when he was done with it, uh, what did Lindsey Graham do? He, cl he changed his phone number. Do you know what Donald Trump would have done if his phone was blowing up? He would have figured some way to make, like, a thousand bucks out of that. Yeah. He would have, like, redirected the number to some, like, you know, hotline. It yes. would have been did so Lindsey Graham, like, destroy his physical phone? Right. Did, he didn't phone. know that you could just change Turn the number and change the phone. Hit the, hit the silent button. Oh, no call. I have done that many times. I have <laughs> I destroyed phones just because of something that was in there. Oh, yeah. Trying to get it out. That's a uh, different issue. Yeah, it is entirely. And I still don't know if I got it out. <laughs> uh, you'll find out later. Uh, Guy, um, I don't even know what I was going to ask you. But I want to ask you this question anyway. Did they, did they help Hillary lose even more? Well, I think that you just mentioned his number one accidental helper, which was Hillary Clinton. Mm. She was so awful. Yeah. Uh, so... This gave him an opportunity to win, which he did. 
I also saw this one actually made me laugh out loud. It was, I believe, the night or two nights before the election, and Madonna announced yes. <laughs> that she was going to be doing an impromptu acoustic concert in Union Square in downtown Manhattan at which she performed uh, like a prayer in front of like, you know, 13 people or something. <laughs> and this was to rally for Hillary. This was to get out the vote. And yeah. I just don't, it mystifies me that that did not turn the tide in rural Wisconsin. Oh, I, well, no. Do you remember, and I think we even did this on the show, uh, Madonna said that she would give yes. oral sex yes, an to any but man who voted for Hillary, and after that, her numbers went down. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been like a virgin in four decades. Like, no. <laughs> what? But, you know, going back to the original question yes. about celebrities had to no. the re the relocate. Yeah. You shouldn't. Um, I, if, if Donald's listening, I would love to be on the, the urban relocation program um, where, hence, after he's sworn in, me and a few of the homies in a truck come to take you to Canada. So, <laughs> so Cher. Yeah. Cher can get her wigs and her, do her dancers have to go with her? I, yeah, I say yes. And we'll just load them up and there you go, Canada. Yeah, there you go. And Canada will be thrilled, tax. Um, will, these, will, will these celebrity videos continue? I mean, will they finally wise up and see that these things are bad news? No, mm -mm. they won't. <laughs> well, they're still, you know, they're still doing it now with, you know, with the with the electoral college thing. They, you know, they were doing that. They're gonna keep going because they think people care, but they don't care. People don't care because we don't relate to them. Lena Dunham, she tries to brand herself as the like I'm kind of chubby, so I'm just like you thing, but doesn't matter because not everybody, even you know, even if they're chubby, has their parents pay for them to live in New York after college and give them money for their stupid movie they make about their own lives and only to go on and do a show, which I think that she just has that show to force her naked body on as many people as possible. Yes. There's nothing relatable about any of that. When I think, what, who am I going to listen to to make decisions, I don't think naked <laughs> lady who's eating cake on the toilet on television. Yes. Well, I think I saw that video. Of course, because you can't escape it. Yes. They've become elitist, which is ironic to me. They've become elitist. It's their way or no way. Mm. And they don't relate to anyone because no one wants to hear a celebrity tell them how rough they've got it. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the other thing, too, is uh, the real revelation is the outrage that they, that they have for Trump reaches the zenith that they never possess for terror. It's like they never get this angry over anything, like the people that actually blow up buildings. Anyway. Because he beat them to it. Yes. Yeah. Coming up, a story so hot, you'd think it was Lou Dobbs in a Speedo. <laughs> Who mends fences better than Donald Trump? I mean, besides Phil, the fence mender is a really good grade on Ang Angie's list. Somehow, throughout the entire campaign, uh, Donald Trump could get away with saying anything. Some may call them lies. I prefer to think of them as truth additives. <laughs> but no matter how many he manages to say, he has an amazing ability to mend fences afterward. Like when he said this, my favorite Trumpy truth about Lion Ted's father. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald being, uh, you know, shot. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. What, what, what is this right prior to his being shot? And nobody even brings it up. I mean, they don't even talk about that. That was reported, uh, and nobody talks about it. So bad. It's so bad. He said his father may have been involved in the shooting of JFK. And he was still elected president. And then met with Senator Ted Cruz for a lovely conversation. Which is pretty gutsy for Donald Trump, given that Ted Cruz comes from a family of assassins. <laughs> All right. How does he manage? Okay, that's a pretty big lie. How do you get away with that lie? I don't know, but I mean that that it is a, it is a truly abusive relationship. And Ted, and and, and so I've been thinking about this. Ted Cruz came into this uh, election. He played the game better, more. He thought through every angle. He was going to be nice to, to uh, Trump until yes. everybody was gone, yeah. and then he was going to run in and deliver <laughs> yes. the kill. And he winds up. And what wound up happening is he played everything so badly. He got so beaten so badly. He is the one Republican of all 17 who can never run again. Yeah, no, no. He, he got, got destroyed. Well, he got exposed for who he was, yeah, which was a totally. climber who actually decided to become best friends with the bully until the bully turned on him okay. and then he's the he's least liked. And who exposed him? Uh, Trump. Yes! yes. 
Totally. Exactly. But then he He's came the back. Then he came back to the bullies team, right? So he was he was buddy buddy with Trump when it served his interests. Yeah. Then the relationship fell apart yes. when you know insulting of wives looks and crazy theories about uh, fathers assassinating presidents. That was you the know, best ten, tends to he do. He was it. in Dallas though that day, just to be clear. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Can you just imagine what Ted Cruz's Christmas dinner is going to be like? <laughs> the sound of silverware on the plate while his wife's just glaring at him. Yeah, it had to be his friend. We're going to be in the cabinet. We're Secretary of State. We're doing this and that. You know, your green name's them sucks. Like it sure his house is. <laughs> his Brutal. He got booed off the he got He's, booed off the stage. At I the just RNC. hate his face. Did you see Brian Kilmeade's face during that interview <laughs> while he was being interviewed? Is there way you can bring that up? No, uh, no. What, what happened? It's a, it's, he just you know kind of feels how we all feel. Uh, look at that. Look at his look at his face. He, he just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Sitting there. Is he saying he can't say listening to Donald Trump accuse Cruz's father of being an assassin? And his face looks the only way that it can when that's happening on your Fox and Friends couch. I can live with like a lie here and there, but I don't like conspiracies <laughs> because conspiracies always are a replacement for thought, right? And that, you know, I mean, do, wait, you you would disagree with me? You he like likes them? Conspiracies. No, I, no, I, it's not. It, it's not Donald Trump's fault that Americans that he was don't, there and killed JFK. <laughs> that Americans don't that don't believe in their government, don't believe in institutions. It's not his fault. Yeah. It's a lot. It's all the professional politicians who've been uh, abusing voters for decades right. before him, and and you can't be surprised if <laughs> uh, somebody. That's right. no excuse to perpetuate it. What about, I mean, that, okay, so it's like you, your uncle sends you an email from a yeah. Nigerian prince and you find out that he's like given uh, your will. The money that was in your will is gone. That's that's all, what I'm talking all about. All I have to do is provide my social security number and bank <laughs> yes. routing number. Yes. Well, Trump yeah. wasn't mending any fences. I think that's important to point out. He just <laughs> got the power to further destroy the fences <laughs> by becoming the president so that people had to pretend, you know, be nice to him. This yeah. is America. You've got to know not to believe in the Nigerian better than prince. that yeah, it's true. was that he knew they had to come back. <laughs> and from a guy who's maybe <laughs> bullied once or twice in his day, there's nothing better than knowing they have to come back. You know, yeah. like they might have said like one day the teacher was outside of recess, so you're not gonna bully me anymore. Okay. Teacher called in sick the next day. I'm waiting for yeah. hopscotch. Yeah. You know, and, and that's kinda what happened with Trump with these guys is they all ran their mouths and then they had to come back to Trump Tower and ask for a job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would have you know would have loved to see Mitt going, hey, hey, hey <laughs> Oh man. He didn't oh, apologize man. though, no. apparently. No, he didn't apologize, and it's, it's hard to apologize when you have a because you're kissing it the entire time. <laughs> all good people, though, all good people, with the exception of maybe one, of all these people that had, I mean, like, everybody, like, every, I think everybody had sincere issues, right? No, the, who's all good people? All the America? People running? No, no yeah, I'm just no, saying the Americans this. are, but I mean, the politicians, no, the politicians aren't. They have screwed things up. Yeah. You know? no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, Mitt's a good guy. I happen to think that Mitch is a good Okay, guy. but he's terrible at his job. If politics is his job. He, he did the gone. Olympics, good sir. Okay, well, then go back <laughs> to doing the Olympics. Get out of politics. <laughs> He has uh, great hair, right? You like his hair. Uh, his hair is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Very good. All right. I think we can agree on that. All right. Final thoughts next. All right. This is exciting. Join me and Dana Perino for an event called Short Stories by Short People. It's Saturday, January 28th at Warner Theater in Washington, D.C. There will also be music by our host, Larry Gatlin. Yes, you can get your tickets by going to Ticketmaster.com. So we're almost out of time here, so... What you've wanted to say all show, but haven't had the chance to say, so here's your chance to say it. Right now. Charles? Uh, I'd say that uh, the, the, the best thing about this election is I think it's the, or I hope it's the last time we do the racial identity politics. Yeah. And Donald, Donald Trump, did. he crushed that. And if, and it, and if that goes away in America, then that's a great accomplishment. It won't, but I hope it will. Guy? Well, let's face it. It's a show called The Year of Trump, so there's a very good chance that Mr. Trump is watching right now. <laughs> he loves watching Fox, which is great. And it's not a secret that I'm a bit tough on Trump and have yeah. been for a while. But if you're watching... 
one of your first acts of president is going to be, or as president, is going to be picking a Supreme Court justice. If you pick a young constitutionalist, I will wear a red baseball cap for a day. How about that? Mm. <laughs> Tyrus? I'll be reading from the Book of Light. Yeah. <clears throat> there is no such thing as an accident. Mm. There is only your true self. Mm. Trying to get your attention. Ask your heart what the message is. Wow. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm underwater because that was so deep. Thank you, Dana. The gift that keeps giving. Yes. From Dana Perino. <laughs> A book from Dana Perino. All right. Last word, Kat. Little Marco <laughs> would actually be a great name for a goldfish. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> Thanks to Charles Hurt, Guy Benson, Catherine, Tyrus, our studio audience. I'm Greg Gutfeld. I love you, America. I do. And a live look at Times Square, where nearly two million people will soon say goodbye to 2016. Hello, 2017. This year, a massive security presence in Midtown.